Hello, this is Carl Irwin with a very quick Blender tutorial. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done this, but I got a specific question and I've had this at, uh, question asked before, uh, so I'm going to answer it with a video. Uh, the question came from uh, Chris Carroll uh, right after I posted a tutorial concerning uh, particles being used uh, for uh, quick asset creation. And uh, he asked this question, hey, quick question while you're here, uh, do you know how to generate particles from a texture in Blender? I can't figure out how to do it and there really aren't good videos on it that I can find. Thanks. So uh, I'm going to answer this uh, question uh, for Chris and for others out there that uh, uh, are inquiring minds and want to know. So the answer uh, to this question is that there is no good way to do it. Um, and I'm sorry to say it, but I've tried to sort that one out myself. Now there are settings inside of the uh, particle texture uh, uh, side of the uh, particle system that seem to point to the ability to allow a texture to emit uh, particles um, because there is there, there's there's a spot for it uh, you know you can put a texture in there and it can emit from from textures but when you when you think about like a dynamic texture uh, such as like with uh, the uh, a really popular one would be with the ocean simulator, right? And the uh, foam layer is a texture, vertex uh, texture, or you could bake it uh, to an, an animated texture. Uh, using something like that to emit particles so that as the foam is being created dynamically on your ocean, uh, it might emit some particles uh, to uh, simulate splash, for example. Or, or, or an even better example would be the uh, paint system. Right, so that as an object comes in contact with another object, uh, that uh, texture that is created via the paint system uh, would, e even if it's baked, would be able to emit particles. Now, I'm going to show you that you can make it work, but it is it is such a poor solution that it isn't worth doing. Um, now, my computer, just to, to make you aware, I, I mentioned this a few tutorials back, I have a new machine, a new computer that I, I just acquired. Uh, it is a uh, it's a used uh, think station. Now this um, uh, Lenovo think station was used for uh, architectural design and rendering, so it's very high powered. It's got uh, uh, Nvidia GeForce Quadro um, GPU. Uh, it has I'm trying to remember what the exact specs on it. It's got eight core uh, processor and it has 32 gigs of RAM. So it's extremely powerful, it's overkill. Um, so this is gonna work kind of okay for me, but for the general computer, like if I was running this on my two uh, um, uh, gig RAM laptop, um, this is just a completely unacceptable way to work. But let me show you what you can do. If you, if you have a powerful system uh, and you're not using too many particles, let's, let's see what you can do with that. We're going to go to the front view. Um, actually, we're going to go to the top view. We're going to actually generate a, um, a texture first. So we'll align the active camera to the view. Uh, we're going to get rid of the default cube. We'll get rid of the light. We won't need it. Uh, and let's create a UV sphere. Uh, and then on this UV sphere, we'll make a text uh, uh, material. We'll make it absolute white. And uh, we'll set it to shadeless. Then we'll make the background black. What we're going to do is we're just going to make a quick animated texture to demonstrate the proof of concept. So I'll slide this up here in the top uh, left corner. Uh, we'll insert a keyframe for location. Uh, we'll just make this 120 frames long and uh, go to the end. And then we'll move it down to the bottom uh, corner. And we'll insert another keyframe for location. Uh, we'll go to the graph editor, hit V, uh, click on vector to make it a straight curve. And uh, if you watch, this is the animation that we have. Uh, now, if I turn on my only render world background, I can render this out very quickly, OpenGL, and uh, we'll render just 50% is fine. AVI JPEG, we'll go to the uh, desktop, and we'll call this animated texture, and we'll hit accept, and uh, render this out really fast. So we'll render this out, 120 frames of a texture, and it's just this 
sphere moving corner to corner. Now, the sphere acts as the white uh, uh, part of an alpha mat. So this is the part that is on. The black is the part that is off in terms of alpha transparency. Uh, and that's typically how you would use a mat. But you can use it also for uh, the emission of particles, uh, which, again, is the whole point here. Let's uh, turn off our only render. We'll get rid of that sphere. We won't need it anymore. And we'll go to the front. Uh, we'll align our active camera to view. Not that we'll actually need it. Uh, we will import that texture now. Images as planes, you want to enable this. This is one of those very highly useful add-ons. Uh, you can turn it on uh, in the settings. And then uh, we'll go to the desktop. We'll select our animated texture. And we want to make sure that it is set to uh, shadeless. And we'll import that and uh, scale it up. And we'll flip it over on the... Uh, x-axis 180 degrees so the normal is facing down. We'll slide this up so we can kind of see it from the underside. And um, we want to make sure that GLSL is turned on so that we can actually see our animation. Now you don't actually have to do this. We could have just made a plane and then mapped this to it. But uh, by importing the texture like this, it's already UV mapped. So we don't have to generate a, a UV unwrap on it. Uh, let's add a particle system. Now, here's, here's where it gets strange. If we um, go to the texture slot for the particle system and we create a new one, and we're going to import an image or, or movie, we go to the open section, we we'll go to the desktop and we'll select this texture again, open it, and uh, automatically there is a UV uh, a map to it, so we'll set it to UV and uh, click the UV map. You don't really have to do that because there's only one UV map there. It would make sense that the influence of this texture should be time. That's what makes sense, right? That you turn on time and that would tell you uh, or, or tell the system that uh, this white circle here is going to emit particles uh, as it passes over the surface. So let's see what happens when we do that. That didn't work at all, okay? In fact, it gives you this really strange result that, that nothing's really working right. Um, you'll notice, you know, it just kind of emits everything right at the start and then and then nothing else happens, okay? So that, that, that doesn't work. It, the logical answer doesn't work, okay? Now, if you were to use a um, internal texture and apply that, uh, in fact, m make sure we have everything else on. We'll just try this again real quick. So, see, yeah, it doesn't work. Um, if you were using a generated texture inside of the system, like a cloud texture or a blend, um, this is typically how you would then apply it. You could use this kind of mapping to tell it when to uh, emit particles. But it doesn't work with this kind of texture. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so... What can we do? Well, there is a way we can do it. it. Instead of using time, if you click on lifetime, uh, and let's try the same thing again. So we'll go back to the beginning. I'll hit play. Now, remember, there's by default a thousand particles on this. So if I hit play, uh, look, you'll see that it emitted four, four particles. Isn't that amazing? So as the uh, circle is passing over the plane, it emits four out of a thousand particles. Now here's why. What it does is it's emitting only the particles out of those thousand that are generated from the plane as the circle comes in contact with those particles where they otherwise would have been emitted. Okay, so without this texture, if we turn the texture uh, off, if we don't, if we don't use it, um, we'll just turn off the lifetime. Thing here and we we let it play you'll see that there are four particles that the circle comes in contact with and those are the particles that it ends up emitting so here's how you have to apply this okay we will turn on the lifetime again we have to go back to the particle settings and for emission instead of a thousand let's set this to like 20,000 okay uh, and then I'll hit play now we see a few hundred 
particles being emitted. So as the circle comes in contact with where these particles otherwise would be emitted, and that's only given that the particles are being emitted between frames 1 and 200. Uh, see, all the while there are particles being theoretically emitted in all of the black area. They just don't show up. Uh, during that time, these are the ones that the circle comes in contact with. Now, this seems like a pretty cool solution, right? I mean, that, that, that seems okay, right? You just set this really high. Let's set it to 200,000 particles. Uh, and uh, we'll try the same thing again. So now we have a bunch of... Now, look, I told you what the specs of my computer is, okay? 8-core processor, 32 gigs of RAM. Now, I didn't cache anything, but even that being said, I'm getting maybe a thousand, not even, really, really less than that, I think, particles for the whole animation. And look at the stuttering. Here's why. It's actually calculating every one of these 200,000 particles. Blender has to go through those calculations uh, in order to emit the ones that you see. Whereas with a texture, like a procedural texture inside of the Blender system, uh, controlling particle emissions uh, using uh, the time setting, it's only calculating the total number of particles that you have that you will actually see emitted. So for this, if I was using a procedural texture, I would get um, uh, a thousand particles being emitted, but only from where the texture is telling it to emit it. Okay. In this case, in order to use an animated texture, uh, I have to incredibly oversample uh, in order to see only a few. And that's why this is really no, no good. It, this isn't a good solution. Um, you know, you're better off just putting an object in a scene uh, and then setting the emitter object to uh, not render and just animate that emitter object around the scene. You know, and I've done that before in other videos. It's really just the easier way. You know, it seems like that's a pain in the neck, but that is the more efficient way because in, when it comes to render time, you're not dealing with this calculation problem. And keep in mind, these particles are just being rendered in the, the viewport. I haven't assigned any geometry to them. These particles are nothing. They're just points in space. And it's stuttering like this on a system this uh, uh, powerful. So anyway, that answers that question. That's how it has to be done uh, to use an animated texture. Now, that being said, we can look at uh, what is required to animate uh, particles using procedural textures. So let's go back to this again. And uh, we'll get rid of this uh, texture. And we'll add a new one. Uh, in fact, we'll go back to our plane here. And I'm just going to turn off the uh, texture so we're not looking at it anymore. Uh, and we'll go back to the uh, particle settings and then the texture slot. We'll add a blend texture, okay? So uh, the blend texture looks like this. We'll put a ramp on it so we can see clearly what it is. Um, it is a, a texture that goes black to white, and we're going to set this to... Um, we'll set it to generated. Uh, and we're going to set it to time. And if I hit play, you'll see that the particles are being emitted left to right following the uh, movement of my blend. See how that works? Okay, now notice it stops short over here. That's because it's, it's depending only on the blend texture. This is a procedural texture. And the number of total particles being emitted are a thousand. Uh, no more, no less. So... Uh, the procedural textures work a little bit differently. It's a little bit more robust. Uh, so if we want this to space out more properly, rather than setting the mapping to generated, we set it to object, and then we select the, um, the plane, which is called animated texture, as the object. And now if we watch this play back, uh, I think you'll see that it goes all the way to the end. Hopefully it doesn't make a... Oh, no, it didn't work. Let, let me try something else here real quick. We're going to create another plane move it up in space and we'll uh, scale this up and uh, <clears throat> we will turn it off let's go back here instead of selecting uh, the actual object itself let's select um, 
the plane that we made to see if that makes a difference. <clears throat> huh, doesn't really work all that well, to be honest with you. I'm not sure why. That's a bit of a mystery to me. Um, usually there's a way that you can, you can see that this just doesn't work all that well. You can see why no one uses it. Um, usually it will go all the way to the end. Uh, maybe if we set generated, let's try that. So it's going to use its, uh, itself again. Maybe that'll work. That didn't work very well either. No. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Not sure. Um, you know, you'd have to play around with this. Perhaps you can animate the actual placement of these keyframes, which you can do. But anyway, you can use you can use it. Let, let's try something else. If we go to uh, blend, but we select um, a different type of blend instead of linear, we'll do uh, spherical. So these should render from the inside out, or actually, it's going from the outside in. You could invert that. If you flip these, it should work. So now, see, they'll render from the inside out. So there's potential for this. You know, I have used this before. Um, you know, one one trick I've used before is to put an explode modifier on this, and then uh, what it does is it will fracture the object up if there's enough vertices on it, and then those fractured parts will crumble apart. So it's kind of like a quick way uh, to generate a uh, like a, a floor that's crackling apart. Um, rather than using the um, uh, shatter, you know, uh, capabilities uh, inside of Blender and having to do all that calculation. Maybe, you know, it's useful stuff. It is. You, I, I don't want to really degrade the abilities here. Um, but to, to answer the question about, you know, like an animated texture, an external texture, there is no good way to do it. So, um, yeah, you're stuck with really the best thing to do is the old school uh, solution, which is to put an emitter in the scene, animate the emitter, uh, turn it off, turn it on, and then <clears throat> uh, uh, render that out uh, with much less system resources uh, being used. So anyway, there you go. That's how you would do it. Uh, so hopefully you find this useful and... Uh, if you dare, go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, so best of luck and happy blending.